start the recording. Okay, there it goes. This is Design 301. It's the lecture. Today's Thursday, November 19th. And uh, remember that your pre-check for Industry Choice 3 is due on Sunday. Okay, so that you can see over here. Portfolio check, pre-check for module three. Optional Module 3, Industry Choice 3. So that's due on Sunday. I suggest that you get something turned in for it so that I can check it out. <clears throat> Might be good enough and you can have a week off. Who knows? Uh, but I'm going to go over two of the options today. One is a tiny house because not everybody has had a chance to even see or know anything about tiny houses. And the other is the civil drawing site plan. So let me come into here. Here's my here's my tiny house drawing. Now remember that a tiny house is eight foot wide. Basically it has to fit on a trailer. Um, sometimes the wheel wells get in the way. Sometimes they don't. And I've made this one 16 feet long. So if I take the distance from corner to corner, you'll see that it's 16 feet long and it's 8 feet wide. And it has to be under um, 13 feet tall, including the rest of this. So my tallest item in here is like 75 inches. So I can make this a standard 8 foot tall It'll be about two to three feet off the ground on the trailer. So this will be about 11 feet tall. So I'm, I'm okay with it. A little bit for a roof. So there's not a lot of extra room, but there, there's some. And I don't have to have eight foot ceilings. I could have seven foot six ceilings, seven foot three ceilings. It is a tiny house, um, so we can look at it. So, <clears throat> let's see what I've done. I've set my units, let me get in here. I've set my units as architectural. That means I use the foot and inches signs, but still everything is really inches. The rest is just AutoCAD saying that I'm pretending that I'm feet and inches. I've made, I haven't made any layers. I should make layers. And I've drawn some things that should be blocks. This one's a block and this one's a block. Standard toilet and a standard oval sink. Uh, but everything else is just sort of stuff I drew. Uh, but you could make it into a block to make it easier to move stuff around. So now, this does not meet ADA, Americans with Disability Acts. It's really cramped. It's really tiny. If you think about it, what what is that? It's, it's 8 times 16. 128 square feet. Um... You know, my smallest bedroom in, in my house, I think, is 80 square feet. So, so that kind of gives you an idea how small this is. And that's the idea. Um, it's, it's not really hooked up to utilities. There are utility hookups. But it's more like a utility hookup that you would see on uh, one of those, um, you know, large campers that go running down the road. So um, it's not supposed to have any permanent hook-ins. On the outside somewhere, there would be an electrical box that you could plug into to have some power. 
There'd be probably a hose or a tank for the toilet and a hookup for a hose to feed this thing water. So as a result, now I could make, I've decided, and you got to think these things through a little bit ahead of time. I put in a kitchenette and there's a kitchenette here and it's got, you know, a little stove and a sink and a little storage and a little refrigerator. So it's going to take a little bit of power and that's got to be something that can drain. And so you got to be able to hook up to a drain. So, you know, tiny houses often do hook up. But um, I put in this one right here, which is really, a, it's a microwave and a coffee maker and a refrigerator. It's amazing what you can make in a microwave these days. Um, um, I could even really make this cool and make a little vent and make this a little power one there's all sorts of i could put i could put one of those what is it instant pot on here and be able to make tons of other good stuff so i chose this one that doesn't have a lot of fancy stuff so this kitchenette here goes right here it's a top view and i looked up how big is a twin bed and I stuck it in there and I shoved my door over. And I just put in a 30-inch door. Can't get a wheelchair through that. Okay? You're not going to get somebody with a wheelchair into this area. It would be pretty hard even if you were on crutches, tell you the truth. So this truly is a tiny house, but this is... There's some room you can walk in and sort of plop down on the bed. If I wanted to, I could even put a little nightstand right here. Um, usually, I haven't located where power would be, but I would, I would put some pretty good power to this thing. I would put a full 15-amp circuit into this. Now, here's an interesting one, this corner shower. You know, you just hook a hose up to that and you're doomed. You would need on here somewhere underneath or sitting on the front here one of those tankless water heaters. Um, and you could make this recirculating. If you put a five-gallon recirculation system on the shower, I've seen those. They're, they actually exist and they're pretty good. And look, you should be able to get your shower head down to one gallon a minute. They have one gallon a minute shower heads. So a five gallon with, um, with a transfer pump and, uh, and, a, and a tankless water heater, you could, you could get a two or three minute shower out of that without any problem at all. So this little corner shower thing is not too bad. They actually sell these at Home Cheapo. Um, we're not really talking about doing all of the HVAC and plumbing and everything. But if somebody wants a cool project um, when they get into some of the other classes, Design 320, you can say, hey, I want to do that cool work and really do this thing up. I can always reassign work i would love to see this laid out with the plumbing and the lines and the transfer pump and know how much power it takes all that kind of stuff to find out really what's uh what's in there so corner shower a little cabinet you got to have a cabinet for something you know you got to have some cleaning supplies and things like that and this isn't bad it can go this can be a Six foot tall cabinet, so you can get a lot of stuff in here. This is a fairly standard pedestal sink. So again, that would have to hook up to the same five gallon water supply that you would have for your corner shower. And five gallon, that's a big water supply, folks. That's really big. A lot of them are two gallons. And you could do that. You could recirculate with the two gallons. 
Uh, and your toilet, there's the big one. How are you going to get rid of that stuff? So there's your thinking. Right now, this would be have to be, uh, if that's a standard toilet, it'd be have to somebody would have to run a line that would hook into the sanitary drain of wherever this is hooked up. But there are other ways to do it too. There are 10 and 15 gallon tanks that you can use to pump out. And a 10 gallon, 10 gallon toilet that that lasts you a fair amount. Um, they they have all sorts of amazing composting toilets now. Um, the recirculating toilets where you're using gray water and 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 treating it and recirculating it. They they actually have some cool self-contained things. If you just look at a boat and look at a boat toilet you'll get some really great ideas because boats are also very very small okay uh i put in a regular twin bed i've seen these with fold-up plank beds or futons um a futon would be great right here right and just pull that futon out and put it up when you want to sit down so this could be but they're gonna I wanted to take up as much room as I could. I did put in a fold up desk, so this would be one that folds up against a wall or or down fold up or fold down and so I moved the windows off to the side in case this was a fold up. If it was a fold down, these windows could move over some more. I put windows on one side of this. I didn't want to live in a freight container, which, by the way, people make amazing homes out of. Um, but I've got some windows here. They're 36 inch wide. And so I could show those. They could be fixed or operable. Fixed means they don't open. Operable means that they do open. Uh, but it doesn't say whether they're the crank style or slide sideways or slide up and down. Um, but I did want some light in here. Notice also I don't have any light fixtures shown. Normally, there's a set of plugs. And plugs have to be no more than 12 feet apart linearly. So if I put one right here, and this is about two or three feet to here, I'd have to have one within nine feet along here. Well, I'd probably put one at six feet and six feet, and you don't need one on this wall, but I would need a separate circuit here, and I'd probably put one here. And that would probably give me coverage, maybe even put one here. I think people cheap out on on um, receptacles you know 15 amps is just one circuit and it's one big plug one big cord going out so um, it, it wouldn't be too bad and then of course each one of your receptacles you could put a wall mounted light or you could put a fluorescent light on the ceiling but I would not make a permanent type of light I just think that it's much easier to put it on later on I haven't talked about what kind of paneling this would use this would take you maybe about it took me about 30 minutes to draw this up and design it so then you would want to start taking pictures like this and adding them in to your drawing so that you could uh, let people know what you are looking at. You would find examples of these things. Put them into your drawings so that you could show them on your layout. Something like that. And then I could make another go up to my layout tool and put in another rectangular view right here. And I could say put put that thing right there to show that. Put one for the corner shower. 
uh, get my dimensions onto this. Maybe if I have, it depends on what sort of um, what sort of um, finish I'm going to put on the inside. If it'll be sheetrock or paneling or cedar board or melamine, I don't know. I did make this um, two by four walls. So these are three and a half inch thick. I did not include any hard insulation. So I'd consider this to be all batting. It has no air conditioning, no heating. You'd have to have a little space heater. Also, that would be a plug in. I haven't said what the floor is like. I did build a little partition wall here. But this is indicating that it's just an opening. It's just an opening. So I would need a curtain or something. Or lo and behold, you're sitting there looking at the world. And the world is looking at you. This window, I would make small and high. But it's nice to have some light in here. Probably put a light on. So there's still a lot to do on this. But that's the idea behind a tiny house. Now... Tiny house might cost, tiny house like this, might cost $10,000. <laughs> Probably get away with five or six or $7,000. But just this thing is a thousand bucks. It's a thousand bucks. Toilets, 200 bucks, 300 bucks, you know. And then by the time you get all that stuff on there, you're at, at 10 or $15,000. But, supposedly, you can, uh, this is on a trailer, and you just uh, haul it somewhere and park it, and then you've, you've got it. So, these are not cheap. It's not like just getting a tough shed and trying to live in it, which you can't do either. All right? So, but these things are real. They are a solution that many people are using for easy infill to, um, you know, solve, solve uh, housing issues for students and kids and low-income housing and all that kind of cool, cool stuff that, that we get to uh, think about and, and try in our world to make better. So, um... So that's what I wanted to go over that. If you're going to work on this, you're not supposed to kill yourself over this. It's supposed to take you, you know, three days worth of work, not much more. Uh, and you can see I'm drawing rectangles and finding on, on, the, on the web, finding some blocks. Do some work and get something turned in and make a nice looking kind of a drawing with some dimensions on it and some information that shows what you've got. Just make a cool thing. The idea is that it's fun. It's fun to think about this stuff. I think it's fun at least. I'd love to build something like this. Okay. Um, there we go. Any questions on Tiny House? And by the way, at the bottom of Google Meet now, you'll see a, a raise hand sign. So you can do that, but I'm just watching the chat line. So if you have a question, you can just pop in or put it in the chat line. Okay, the next one I want to look at is the site plan. And I've done a little bit of work here. I've got a few layers, C-prop details, parking. And I want to talk about the parking part of this. So let's take a look and see. You're supposed to essentially reproduce this drawing. So if you've been working 
on civil stuff, you'll see. There's a boundary, and you can probably figure out how to draw that. And I'm going to show you how. There's some other stuff, but this is sort of mystical. This shows a parking lot, and there's not very many dimensions. So there's some thing you, you get to make it what you'd like it to be. But there are some things here that are sort of constraining you. So we'll take a look at some of that and, and see what we can do to lay this out and, and see how it might work. Okay? We'll just see what we, we'll see what we can do. So my first thing, I'm going to pull this one off to the side. I can kind of see that. And I've drawn it often enough, I kind of know. There we go. So, going to get this kind of set as big as I can make it. I got most of it showing here. So the first thing I'm going to do is draw my property line. And so my units, since it's civil, are going to be feet. When I type something in, I mean feet. So this is, it starts somewhere. I'll start at 0, comma 0. And then I go from where I'm at. 115 feet at an angle. Oh, I didn't set my units as surveyors. I need to make them surveyors units because that's how it's talking to me. So let me get that again. I'm going to start at 0, comma 0. And then I'm going to go from where I'm at. 115 feet at an angle. Angle of north, three degrees, 15 minutes west. And that's how I type it in. N, 3D, 15 apostrophe W. And, and that was the only hard part. And then I see it's 160 feet due west. And 75 feet due south. And then down here at 63.5 feet due east. And then I just need to connect it. So that's the basis of it. And then if you've been doing the civil work, you know how to put these little dots in and stuff like that. And when I go to a layout, lo and behold, it shows up correctly. See how all of my property lines, because we have our layouts shown to be an annotative scale on the line weights. It's called viewport line type scale, VPLTS. And we've got it set to readjust itself. So you don't have to make it look right over here. We'll make it look right in the viewport. And so that's cool. But then I see that there's these offsets. And that is just by building code, local building code, not California, but local building code, says how far away you can actually put things from the property lines. So offset. The front offset is 30, and the side offsets are 10. And those go on their own layer, but I'm not going to worry about that part. Because that's not what I really want to show you about. If you've been doing the civil work, you know it. And if you haven't, 
you'll you'll get on it and do some. So I'm just trimming away stuff that doesn't belong. Because when I do that offset, you know it. There. So the offset says all my construction has to hand work in here. Okay. And so I'm going to look at this thing over here. You see this? Maybe I'll put this on the jam board. And you guys, this is the coolest thing. I can actually start a jam board now that you guys can all get onto. Share with three people. Send. So it's going to send the sharing link to the... Well, why is it only sharing to three people? Well, there it is. There's the... There, you can get onto it in the chat, I think. There we go. But I want to I want to talk about this a little bit so that you can see what the thinking is cuz I don't really know anything about this. I I there's no dimensions. Although there are some dimensions in other places. If I look at the previous page, it says a parking space is 9 feet wide by 18 feet long. So I know how big each one of these is. And it tells me how big this is too. And I'm looking at this and that looks like a parking place. And that looks like a parking place. So if, and this looks like it hits up in this corner and this looks like it kind of hits over here and this is probably four feet wide at least three feet but probably four feet so if I come up and over I can find that spot then I can offset the width of my the width of my uh, walkway and then I can offset 18 feet and come down. And that gets me that. And then in the other direction, I can come straight down from here. And I can offset over 18 feet. And that gets me that. So now I've got that spot and that spot. And I can draw up. And then I can just start drawing my spaces until I get to there and drawing my spaces until I get to there. Isn't that the coolest thing? So it's, it's all about just thinking this through. It's all about just thinking I know that spot and I know that spot and I know how big each of these rectangles are. So I can just start drawing. And I can come up and, oh, I can come up anywhere and then over until I hit that spot. Does that make sense to everybody? I hope so. Let's see if I can reproduce that now. Oh, and where does it tell me about that size? I know I'm all over the place here, folks, but... It tells me about those sizes right here. This page tells me about the size of a regular parking lot. And it says that it's 9 feet across by 18 deep. And that this thing has to be some size. 5 feet. That has to be 5 feet. 
So design is really, you have to get good at reading the information that's around because I don't get to just make up my own stuff. I have to, I have to make sure that I'm meeting standards. So I'm going to, I'm going to now start meeting some standards. So I'm going to draw on my parking layer. I'm going to draw up nine feet. I'm going to draw over that way. And I'm going to come down straight. And then I'm going to make my walkway four feet wide. And then if I offset that nine feet, Need the foot symbol. Boy, I am just doing a terrible job. Nine feet. Oh. There we go. That's really where my parking lot is going to go. Right? Does that look sort of like... There it is. Oh, 18 feet. Right? The parking lot, a parking spade is 18 feet deep. So that's along one edge, and this is where my other edge goes. And I could move those over a little bit. I'm going to take a distance from here to here. That's 30 feet. That's pretty wide, but not bad. If this person has to back out 18 feet, and it makes them run into this, I like that. Have you guys ever been in a parking lot that's too short? I hate that. Okay. So. So here's this part. And I can trim that away now. There, that's the back edge of my parking lot. And that's really nice because this car can back out and kind of come down a ways. So now I'm just kind of getting rid of stuff that I don't particularly need extra. Now these are every nine. One, two, three, four, five on this side. Offset nine. One, two, three, four, five. And then get rid of a bunch of the stuff from my walkway there. So 
So that's getting there. And then this now offsets 5. That's going to be my park, my ADA parking hatch. And then it's got one more of 9. There. I have the left side of my parking lot done. Now I just need to do my right side. And I see that there's going to be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then this is going to carry on. And this will carry on. And of course, those trim. Hey, I have my parking lot. That's kind of cool. And then this is a fillet. It's probably, it looks like it's 4.5. It's halfway across. So, and I think one, two, three, four. A oh, one, two, three, it's in number four. One, two, three, it's in cross number four. So now I have the fillet command with a radius of 4.5 because that's half of the distance across. Does that make sense? Okay, and so I can do the same thing. He Oops. And I'm gonna I'm gonna suggest that you do the same thing on these ones, just because it looks cool. Now, if you want to do some really cool job, you could offset these to be a curb, so it's a double line. This is more than sufficient for what. I, I want for this class for the parking lot now let's talk about what these are oh let's also trim that away so what is this that's a planter for a tree planter for a tree a spot for a tree and a spot for a tree, spot for a tree and a spot for a tree. So we know that when you have wide expanse of concrete, it's just not very good for our environment. The, the shade requirement for parking is substantial. After 15 years, you're supposed to have like 40% shade. Now, that doesn't always happen. As a matter of fact, it rarely happens. But this gives an opportunity for a landscaper to say, you know what, I'm going to plant something that has a shade canopy with a diameter of 22 feet. 
And now by putting these in, they can determine whether they meet the shade requirement or not. And they might still need to get a couple of more, but that's what that's what those little planters are for. So that you have a shade re shade. <laughs> Okay, um, let's see. This is just a hatch right here. You guys are already getting familiar with hatch. And you could do the standard hatch or you could do this cool ANSI hat, ANSI 32 hatch. And that's way too much, so let's go with a five. That looks pretty good, maybe even eight. There. That looks kind of nice. And then don't worry too much about the size of this little, but that's to put your parking thing in. Now, one of the things that you might do is you might look at this and see what this thing looks like. Because it says there's supposed to be three foot slope and a certain size. And you could, if you wanted to, um, start drawing in and then I think that goes uh, you know, you'd have to you'd have to read this thing over here. I'm not an ADA professional. Maybe four feet where that slope goes. And you could put some sort of a a light hatching on that. I think there's even supposed to be little bumps on it. This is where you could use your cool super hatch. And super hatch that. Um, but that's it's just kind of a cool, cool thing to do if you want. And then you have to draw the rest of it, just as you as you get going. Okay, so that's what that's what um, that's what the civil plan is supposed to look like. There we go, and it slowly gets more and more and more. So this should be a hidden line. And you put all this stuff in here. This is a really good, good one. And we use this site over and over and over again in our department. So if you want to take your time and do this and start working on it, then when you get into Design 320, Design 310, 330, um, 350, um, what else do I use it in? We use it in a bunch of other ones. You'll already have this drawing, or at least you'll be familiar with it, and you can redraw it lickety-split. Okay? Any questions on that one? I'll go over to the chat line and make sure that I'm reading the chat line. Do any of you have some questions on that? Yes. Uh, well, it's best to. At a minimum, please put in the building pad. Um, but the roof is actually really simple. So let me show you how to do the roof. Let me get back to the jam board. Did I close the jam board? Oh, I didn't get enough of the jam board on there. Let me show you how to do that. That's a great question. Oop. Oh. 
So, this is what happens on a roof. Regardless of the slope, regardless of the slope, these lines are all at a 45 degree angle. Every line off of a corner is at a 45 degree angle. And then where lines hit, they stop. Okay, and then they go straight until they hit the next one. So where these ones stop, it would go straight until it hits the next one. And where these two hit, it would go until it hits the next one. And then the last one is right here. And these dimensions are in the workbook a few pages earlier. Okay, so these dimensions are there. Now, if you don't feel like doing the roof plan, you could actually just draw the foundation in. Okay, and if you want to, you could realize that the foundation is actually a rectangle that's 36 by 24. Okay, so that would be the minimum to do. 36 by 24 pad. It's really nice to know that there's a building there and what it looks like. It's nice to put the walkway on. And this is an arrow pointing down so this is the high side this is the low side does that make sense did that does that answer the question okay yeah and so this is extra work I get it um, I'm not gonna count off I will not reduce your grade if all I see here is a rectangle, I will not reduce your grade if that's all I see. I'm really most interested that you can go through this process of figuring out where this goes by going, okay, there's a spot that I just don't have any control over. And there's a spot I don't have any control over. So let me use those two spots to sort of set up how the rest of this works, okay? And my thought, if I, well, first of all, you should also know this parking lot is way, way, way too big. According to Cal Green, this would never fly. There is too much concrete or asphalt here for this tiny little size of a building. But this was drawn probably 50 years ago. This was in the workbook in 1989 when I took Design 301, <laughs> right? Has been in there forever. Um, so just so you know, this is really about the process, the thought process. This is a terrible, terrible design. But if I am designing a parking lot, which I've never had to do, but I've been involved in the design process, I want the distance between the two aisles to be at least 20 feet which is really not enough. I want it to be 25 feet, which gives me room to actually get 18 feet back and get a little bit of a turn. But if I've got 30 feet, I can back up and get a turn without worrying about hitting this person behind me. And then I can get out, okay? Yeah, yeah, you guys have all been in that kind of parking lot, right? It's like, like, what kind of idiot made that one? 
Actually, it was probably somebody who works for the insurance agency or an auto body shop or something like that. Okay, uh, that was a good question. Thank you. Are there any other, any other questions before I close this off? I can, but here's what I want you to do. If you've got a question, what, what, what are the rules? Do you remember, Jake? Okay, so here are the rules. You're going to go on to the chat, and you're going to put at, at your name, and you're going to type your question, okay? And then I'm going to go in order. So, for instance, Oleg just got his name in, so I'm going to ask Oleg first. And then, um, and then, like, if you get your name on there right now, Jake, you'll be second. And then maybe Janice has a question. So you put your name in order on the chat line. And that's who I'm going to go to answer questions to in that order. Cool? All right. Then I'm going to turn off the recording. Okay. So, Oleg, I'll help you out with that in just a minute. Sketch number one. Got it. Um, that's cool. I'll be with you in just a moment. I'm going to go ahead and mute myself. I'm not going to turn this off, but I'm going to mute myself, stop the recording, and get the recording for class posted. Then I'm going to come back and start answering questions. So it'll be about five minutes from now. At the most 10, I'll be answering questions. So, Jake, get your name on the chat line. Cool. <laughs> 